Hey everyone, welcome to another movie breakdown. Today we're gonna to be working with After Effects to recreate the Zombie Land intro text. It's a really, really neat effect, so let's take a look at the clip, analyze it, and then show what we're gonna be doing in After Effects. So, if we take a look at this clip, we can see that we have this, basically, uh, this text. It has this sort of grainy red and black, and as the scene goes on, it sort of explodes in a slow motion. And with After Effects, we're gonna be able to recreate that pretty close, as you can see right here. And the best part of this whole thing is we're gonna be using no plugins for this. So we're gonna be able to manipulate every aspect of this through After Effects without a plugin like Element. And we're also gonna be able to break out certain elements so that we can combine it all into one easy slider, this randomizer slider right here. So we can animate it in any way that we want. We can choose which characters we want, all, like I said, done within After Effects. It's a really, really fun effect, and you'll learn a ton from this. Anyone can do it, even if you've never touched After Effects before. And that's what's the power of this, is once you create this, you can bring it into your Premiere Pro productions and just utilize it anywhere you want. So let's get started on this. So the first thing we're gonna do to create this effect, we're gonna go up to here, and we're just gonna create ourselves a new composition. We're just gonna name this one the text layer, and then we have created our composition. Now, we need to write down some text. So we're gonna go up to the Type tool, grab that, click and then write anything we want. I did production designer because in the clip it says that, but you can do anything. We could do like lighting specialist. And if you see it's white right now, so it, we can either turn off the back to see it or we can change the color. It's not gonna be white for long. That's gonna be one of our first things. So I'm just gonna turn this off just so we can see what we are doing here. And what I wanna do is take this, go to the bottom right along the effects here. We're gonna go down into the text effects, the properties here. And what we want to do is we want to go into the align and then just make sure we align both of this. This will center the text so that we can begin working on it. Now to create that red background, we're gonna create ourselves a new solid. So if you right click here, go to new and then solid, we can name it anything we want. I'm gonna name it um, the background. And with this, we want to go into our effects now. So if we go to wherever our effects tab is, I keep mine on the right side here down with the effects effect presets right like so and from here i can search for effects but it could be really anywhere on your production so i'm just going to go ahead and search in here for we're going to look for fractal noise so it's under noise and grain which means you can also go up to effect under noise and grain and add it from there we're going to grab that we're going to drag and drop that onto the top here now it already creates something pretty similar if you take a look at the footage versus what we have here they're very very similar and from that, we can sort of just make some some edits here. I like to take the fractal type and switch it around. Rocky kind of looks a little good. Um, you can go turbulent sharp. It gives a little bit more of those sort of sharp lines. And I, I think that's going to be uh, a good thing to do here. We're then going to go down and we need to make this colored. So we're going to go back to our effects and we're going to look for an effect called tritone. So if we search over here, tritone color correction we're going to drag that on as well this is going to allow us to change the colors to better fit that red so with our shadows we still want that black and maybe we change this up just a little bit so if we go in here we could maybe bring it just slightly towards that red it's not going to have that much of an effect though the mid-tones is really what's going to have the effect if we click on this and we go to that red we can really create that deep red that shows up and same with the whites here we kind of want the whites to be way more leaned into the red like so and now we have a pretty good background it's looking pretty similar to the other one and we can keep adjusting this for example that it still looks a little bright so maybe we want to bring down the brightness a little bit and that might get it a little bit closer to what the the footage actually looks like once we have this and we're ready to go we want to take this background and drag it beneath our text we then want to go over into our track mat and make sure in the bottom left here that you have that selected this little sort of circle and square and this will collapse or expand the other ones we want to go to our background and switch this to lighting specialist this is going to take that fractal noise and it is going to throw it inside of the text here and now we can make adjustments with it on the text itself. So from here, we can actually go to the, the transform. And I think if you scale it back a little bit, it creates a little bit better of a look. And that's just because what it's doing is it's actually scaling the entire thing down. So if you look, once we scale it back and forth, we're increasing or really decreasing the amount of fractal particles. So I like to scale it back to create a little bit more of, of I would say, fractal particles per square inch, um, which just means that it's going to have a little bit more in this small space here. 
And so overall, I think that this is looking very similar to the movie. If you want it exactly like the movie, you're going to have to be adjusting these very constantly and having them next to each other and that sort of idea. But what we want is just, you know, pretty close. So now we got to get to the fun part. And the fun part is we're going to be actually creating the animation itself. So without plugins, we're going to have to use a little bit of expressions. We're going to have to use the tools that we have in front of us. And After Effects can do a lot without plugins. Because really, at the end of the day, the plugins just add on to the things that after effects is usually already able to do so from that we're going to go into here we're going to look at our text layer and we're going to click animate and we want to start by animating our rotation but before we get here we need to make sure we turn on this 3d and this is going to make this a 3d element which will unlock the ability to do 3d things like bringing them towards the camera rotating them around an axis those sorts of ideas so after we've activated that 3d we then want to go to the animate and we want to hit enable per character 3d with this we are then going to be able to basically animate per character so instead of animating the entire text you can see there are these little boxes so the effects are going to be applying per character written we then can go into our animate and we're going to create a rotation animation we're going to rename this really quick just by right clicking on it and naming it rotation just so we know which one we're going with this range selector, we're going to go ahead and delete, and we're going to add in ourselves down to selector and expression. All that means is that we want to write some code for this rather than giving something predefined. From here, we're then going to go drop this down, and we're going to write some code in here. Before we do that, we need to create some controls. So we're going to go over here into our effects and presets, look for expression control, slider control, drag and drop that over into our effect controls for the text. And then if we click on it, we can click that command or control D. And we just want to create four of these. We're going to rename these really quick here. So we're going to rename this one to seed. This is just going to be our randomness selector. We're going to rename this one to character start limit. We're going to rename this next one to character end limit. And then we're going to name the final one progression. This will give us the controls to affect our, well, to affect our effect um, the way that we want to. So now once we get in here, we can actually begin writing some code. So right off the bat, we're just going to create the associations here. So I'm going to say that the variable seed is going to be equal to, and then this slider. But how do we do that? Well, we can type it in, but there's this cool little lasso that we're going to drag and drop that on, and it's going to connect them that way. So then we can do character start limit the same way, click drag that little lasso over character end limit and then we're going to drag well oh, oh, I don't want to type that in we just want to drag it on over and then progression we're going to save for another time uh, that's going to be a little bit later on so with this we now have our sliders that are going to be affecting the code right here we can then go and actually create the sort of randomness so to do that we're going to just write in some basic stuff here so re seed random like so and all this is doing is saying hey generate a random seed and what do you want to use for it we're going to say we're going to use the text index plus the seed value that we have and it's going to be stationary like so so the text index is just which character so this is text index of i don't know if this is programming wise or regular this is either zero or one but it's basically saying that each one of these is going to be different. So the value for this H is going to be different than the value for this S and so on and so forth. So that's all that's doing right there. Again, you don't have to understand this 100%. Just the general understanding is okay. Next, we're going to write an if else statement. So with this if else statement, all it's going to be doing, and I'm just going to copy and paste it so you don't have to watch me write this all out, and I'll explain it. It's this statement right here. So basically, all it's stating is that if the text index, we just described that, if the character location is greater than or equal to the start limit, so that's this number over here, and it's uh, less than or equal to the end limit, then we apply the randomness effect. What that gives us the ability to do is say, hey, I want to grab these three letters and apply the effect, or I want to grab this, this back end here, this sort of ting right there and i want the effect to apply there or i want to grab the back this list portion and affect it right there it gives us control so if we go into here and we say okay i want to go from three to seven and then we grab this rotation right here you're going to know only three through seven has an effect applied to it if we go okay i want to go five through nine only five through nine is going to have that effect added to it. So it's a great way that we will be able to, oh, well, I put 90, that's why all of them were moving. But it's a great way to be able to affect just the characters that we want to affect. This gives us, like I said, more control. The next thing we're gonna do is right now, 
these are all independent of one another. We want to be able to use the slider up here. So if we go to this X, Y, and Z rotation, grab that little guy and slap it onto each one of these, like so, this progression is now going to control every bit of the animation. So you can see that it adds an X, a Y, and a Z rotation. So if we go to just zero and then type 50 here, this will just grab all of the characters. When we progress this like so, you can see that they all have an effect. Now, they all are just affecting themselves in a sort of stationary motion. We don't want that to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our, back up into our animation and we're going to add in a position animator as well. And this is going to be pretty quick and simple because we're just going to name this position. And instead of writing on that code again, it works for this as well. So if we just go to here, click, it's automatically going to highlight all of it. So control C, copy it all, go back, go to our position, delete that range selector off, add in that expression selector, go keep clicking on all the downs, go to the code, click control V. And now, once we grab that whip on the position like we did with the X, Y, and Z rotation, grab that whip on over to that progression. And then now once we do it, they all explode properly. And you can even go backwards. So what's awesome about this is, like I said, it's all animatable as well. So we can say, hey, I want to start at 3 and I want to go to 8. And then I want to progress it this way. I don't like the way it's doing. That's what the seed comes in. You can randomize it until you like what it's doing. So in this case, let's say we enjoy that. And now we can sort of progress it as we go. And since this has an animation stopwatch on it, we can actually start at zero, go to the four second mark, and then bring it up. And you're going to see that the effect will continue nicely over time here. So we're almost done with this effect. We've now created this really, really neat sort of fun effect here but we wanna be able to have better control over it because once we get to a point where we're adding multiple of these texts, we wanna be able to control them independently and we wanna be able to change the text out, et cetera, et cetera. To do that, what we're going to finally do is go into our window and go to this essential graphics panel. We're gonna create something called zombie land text. So just type that whole zombie land text and we wanna go ahead and attach it to our primary, which in this case is going to be our text layer it's going to be this composition right here so whatever your composition name is make that your primary and then name it what you want so in this case zombie land text from that we can then click this solo supported properties button what does that do it shows us everything we can add to this menu right here it just makes it easier the things we want to add to this menu well we want to add the sliders first so anything in the sliders we want to add up here so we're going to go ahead and grab this slider grab this slider grab well not the opacity grab this slider and then grab this slider and now we have all of our effects exposed and then finally we want to be able to change the text so we're going to go with the text and source text as well and you're going to see that this is, starts off with the name like that i'm just going to say it's going to be the effect text like so so now since we've created this in this little area right here we can go ahead and create a new composition and actually drag in our text layer compositions. So now that we have this created and we have the effects, we can actually go up to composition new and we can name something like main effects composition. We can go to our project and then find that text layer and drag it in. And from this, because we've exposed these properties, we can go to the essential properties and we can actually change the properties. So we're going to give it a new text by right clicking on it and going to edit value. And we can then just edit this into anything we want. For example, let's go with Adobe Masters, like that's the person who created it. We can then click on it and of course go back to that V tool and then move that here, grab this top layer, move it like so in the effect it was actually a little shorter so if we go to transform we actually scale this down a little bit it sort of worked like this and from here we can do the effect that we've been trying to create so if we go and go to like the two second mark we can go to our character end and start limits on both of these and we can count out where we want so for example let's say that we want everything from this point over to be affected so in this particular case it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen basically fourteen so we want the text layer which is the i believe it's this one yeah lighting specialist we want the 
first want to be from 14 until any large number. And then the second one, we want one, two, three, four, give or take the five, or maybe even six. So we're going to go with six until basically 50. Now we can affect this progression. So if we click the stopwatch of both of these, move forward to the six second mark and maybe bring them up to, I don't know, about 65. You're going to see that as we come through, it's now going to create our effect where we slowly start disintegrating just like the other one. A final thing that we can do is if we go into this main effect, we can actually just add a little bit of a effect here, a layer style and an outer glow. And we can give it sort of a um, that sort of golden look by going into the outer glow options, going down to color here, and then just changing it to this goldish color. In the movie, they have this like deep gold. So if you copy this onto each one of the new ones, you can actually just um, sort of create that. So now they have this gold feeling and it, it resembles the movie just a little bit better. But although the tutorial is long, this is a way that you can circumnavigate plugins by knowing the software a little bit better. You can use expressions, you can use ChatGPT to help you with them, Google searches, and you can have a lot of control over the things that you create in After Effects. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. Hit that subscribe button to see more movie breakdowns and more videos similar to this one. And until next time, everyone, see ya.